Good afternoon and welcome to your 4pm Sports Bulletin. I'm Thomas D. The first Ashes Test is in the balance after the second day's play at the Gabba. The hosts are 165 for 4 in reply to England's 302 all-out with captain Steve Smith unbeaten on 64. However, England bowler Jake Bull says the visitors are in a good position going into day 3. We feel we're in a decent position. Get a good night's sleep and, and a bit of rest and come out hard in the morning. If we nick a couple out and then you're into like sort of Stark and Cummins, I think that's a, a good position for us to be in. We now know the name of first team to book their place into the Rugby League World Cup final. Australia thrashed Fiji 54 points to 6 in the first semi-final in Papua New Guinea. England will play Tonga in the other semi-final on Saturday. One Premier League manager hopes he will not follow in the footsteps of some of his other counterparts this season. Mauricio Pellegrino believes Southampton will recover from their poor start to the season after recent defeats to Burnley and Liverpool. But he is not the only manager under pressure at the minute. You like the speculation? Continue in your way. I don't talk nothing more about this. Because sometimes I talk and after you go in the other way, I don't give one more word about this situation for you. I'm not scared about my job. I am scared about a lot of things, not about my job. Play on Sunday, on Wednesday, on Saturday, you know. He finishes contract, he has the right to decide his future. Goals are great and of course, ultimately as the season ends, I think strikers will be, will be judged on that. But um, it's all about how the team functions. Certainly the team didn't function as well as it can do early in the season for a number of reasons. Trust him 100%. So we know how we came in the situations. That's what we have to change. I really hope not. And I'd love to think that every single player is hurting the way I am at the moment. Um, if they're not hurting the way I am, they shouldn't be here. We've got fixtures coming up which are going to be much more difficult. Uh, albeit, I've got to say, in Leicester City is a really difficult fixture as well. The winning is the thing that changes a lot. The thing that changes how your week looks, it changes how you, you go about your work. There's certain things I'm not in control of. They're the things that I choose to not pay much attention to. West Ham's fans uh, want a reaction. We know this, uh, this team at home. It's about instant success and it's about the real fear of dropping out of this division. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. The penalty was given. We did lose points as a result of it. And the FA have seen fit to punish him because they obviously don't want it to happen to other teams. The second time it was, uh, was positive. You feel a bit of a... Uh, afraid you are a bit scared you never you cannot guess what is going to happen on the future and with myself the same one of the managers that's recently been sacked has had an interest from another premier league club to step him back into the dugout former west ham boss slavon bilic has rejected the chance to speak to west brom about their vacant managerial position bilic was sacked by the hammers earlier this month but it is believed the 49 year old croat wants to take time out from the game the nominees have been announced for the BBC Overseas Sports Personality of the Year Award. Tennis legend Roger Federer is the biggest name amongst the six contenders, with a surprise inclusion being world darts champion Michael Van Gerwen. The winner will be announced at a ceremony on Sunday the 17th of December. Time for Formula One now, and the second practice session is underway as the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Mercedes Lewis Hamilton is top of the session with over 30 minutes remaining. Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel is in second, ahead of Red Bull's Daniel Ricciardo in third. The race is the last in the season which has seen Lewis Hamilton win his fourth world title after a length season-long battle with Sebastian Vettel. Following on from Alan Shearer's documentary on head injuries, we spoke to former Southampton player Chris Nichols, who speaks about his problems with dementia. I forget things, but, but so does everybody else. I forget things. It's not exclusive to me because I was head involved. So people who never plenty of girls, I'm so sure, have the same problem. It's not conclusive. I don't think it's conclusive that the medical industry likes to think these. Not, not proven in any way because it can happen to people who have never had a ball in their life. And now for our radio packages put together by our very own news teams here at Solent Sports News. Twelve years after West Brom's great escape, Gosport Borough are aiming to replicate that achievement in even more dire situations. A recently lifted transfer embargo has hampered the side season so far, but with their first league win of the season in the bag, the Hampshire outfit are looking to battle back up the table. 
Back with Thomas Kushak. Mike Riley blows for full time. It's all over at the Hawthorns. The news has come through. Brian Robson's baggies are staying in the Barclays Premiership. Bottom of the table at the start of today. Bottom of the table at Christmas. The curse is over. In 2005, West Bromwich Albion pulled off one of football's greatest escapes when they avoided relegation, breaking the bottom of Christmas curse. Fast forward 12 years, and Gosport Bar are now hoping to do the same. After a troubled campaign which has seen them at the foot of the Evo Stick Southern League, with a crippling transfer embargo, a shoestring squad, multiple managers and a dire financial straits, as manager Mick Catlin explains, it's been a tough time for the club. We want to try and regroup this year, try and do enough to stay in the league and hopefully sort the financial problems out so that we've got a decent chance of uh, assembling a good squad for next season. But the club now has something to smile about. The embargo was lifted last Friday, allowing the club to sign players and increase their squad from just 16 men. James Thompson, who immediately signed and made his debut on the Saturday, bagged the winning goal in the last minute against fellow strugglers Dunstable, Gosport's first win of the season. Brilliant, obviously, on my debut, any goal, enjoyable, but especially on your debut and then turn out to be the match winner, it was brilliant, yeah, really good. The Hampshire side aren't prepared to rest on their laurels and will be looking to build on a win after a run of 10 consecutive losses. With a two-hour journey to Kettering Town tomorrow, midfielder Jack Breed is hopeful that Barra can push on from here. Obviously, it's been, a, been quite a struggle throughout the season. I think now we're getting a basis of a team and everything's sort of slowly moving back it, back forward and we're starting to do well. We can only go up, really, from what we've been through. However, Gosport still sit at the bottom of the table, with new signer Lee Molyneux, who has returned to the club on a one-month emergency loan, stressing that they can't get carried away just yet. It didn't phase me at all, the position Gosport are in. It's a club that's close to my heart and a club I never want to see relegated, which is the situation at the moment. No one can shy away from that. So yeah, relish the challenge. Come here and try and help out. After having a season no player or manager would want to experience, Gosport looks set to take their battle to survival for a 23rd place Dunstable, with three games in hand over the Bedfordshire Bay side, which is something that Catlin relishes. we just got to keep plugging away, pick up results where we can. I mean, the good thing is the squad's getting stronger and stronger and hopefully going into the second half of the season we can pick up the wins we need to get off the bottom and once we're off the bottom, we need to stay off the bottom. With over half of the season still to go, the race for survival in the Evo Stick Southern League looks set to go right down to the final whistle. Could we see a repeat of 2005? Daniel Lewis, Southern Sports News. This is what the dreams were about. This is what the prayers have been about all week. On to the price of football now, and it seems that this is something that's rising every year. So here's a rundown of the latest BBC's investigation. Last week, the BBC released the findings of their annual price of football study and found single ticket prices in the Premier League range from £9 at Liverpool to an incredible £95.50 at the Emirates. <coughs> Football's always been said to be the working class sport, so how can clubs justify charging almost £100 a game? With prices rising so much, many young fans are having to make huge sacrifices in order to follow their club, as Mansfield Town fan Connor Wigley told us. Well, split with my ex, which was quite kind of to do with it, to be honest. It wasn't the sole reason, but, you know, I've, I've saved a bit of money not being with her, I suppose. I've just ploughed all that straight back into football. As bad as that sounds, it weren't the only reason, but, you know, it was a contributing factor. Everyone knows football's unpredictable. It's often full of few highs and many, many lows. Like a lot of others, the rising prices and poor football has left Saints fan Alex Daniel wondering if it's really worth it. In Europe particularly, I think I've done 12,500 miles travelling without seeing us score one single goal. So, um, again, when I was funny enough in Prague this time last year, watching us lose again, and you just think, what, why, why am I here? But in an age where the Premier League average wage sits at a cool £46,000 a week, can clubs really justify charging fans in excess of £40 to watch half-hearted performances? Top clubs like Man City could argue that watching top players makes their tickets value for money. Aston Villa, on the other hand, not so much. Like it's genuinely frustrating just playing that much to sort of see good players on another team but absolutely dreadful players on your team. So I personally, yeah, I think it was way too much. 
When he saw his club drop out of the top tier for the first time in their history, Villa fan Patrick Cragg assumed that ticket prices would also fall. That wasn't the case though. In the Championship, there's no price cap on away tickets, and the average ticket price is £36. A trip to Hillsborough to see your team take on Sheffield Wednesday will set you back £49. The problem with teams like Villa and Sunderland and teams that have very low home attendances for big clubs, the problem is, no, like it gets to the point, no one wants to keep paying 30, 40 quid to see dreadful football and no atmosphere, like why would you want to do it? As prices rocket and more and more young fans get priced out of the game, there's one area of the stadium where fans aren't complaining and are willing to part with as much cash as it takes. Hospitality is a major earner for football clubs and Liverpool's boardroom lounge manager Alex Watson says clubs are finding every way they can to squeeze in as many corporate fans as possible. And what we do is we put packets in with them, so it's like three, four hundred a ticket. You get your dinner, bed and breakfast there. You get like a two or three course like breakfast, depends on what time the is. And then we provide transport to, from the game, just so it takes a bit of pressure off us at the stadium. So we can feed them hotels and then get them over into in, in the game there. And they, they all they all sell out as well. They're, they're really popular packages. Liverpool's most expensive ticket in the stands costs £59, but that's nothing compared to their hospitality prices. Packages for Saturday's game against Chelsea start at £150 and go up to almost £750. And unbelievably, that's not even their most expensive one. So I work in the boardroom, which is like um, the, the most expensive one. So I look after like, the players, the legends, the coaches, and you can't, you can't really like, book a table in there. It's like 25 grand for a table for the season. Whilst Anfield's lounges may be packed out every week, not many Scouse accents can be heard through its plush corridors. Many of the fans that can afford to visit come from Northern Europe and Asia, which leaves us thinking, is it going to get to the point where English football becomes so global that the English can't afford it? Getting so many people coming out from your Norways and, and families who are, who are purely coming for like a weekend away, as opposed to you working class people who'd go shout and actually have, do you know what I mean, make a day of it. But no, the prices are going to keep going up, I think. And I, I don't know when they're going to cap. Southampton City have started the Tennis National Premier League with a 100% record, all thanks to doubles pairing Jake Norris and Liam Hignett, with the team setting their sights on the final. Jamie and Martina Hingis are mixed doubles champions for 2017. How would you feel playing in a national tennis tournament, graced by Wimbledon champions such as Jamie Murray and Jonathan Murray? That's what current Southampton City tennis stars Liam Hignett and Jake Norris get to do and Liam is confident they can go all the way. I think we've got a great chance in the South West group. I mean, we've already probably beaten the best team. So as, as long as we can keep fielding out strong players for every match, then I think we'll be good going forwards. With Liam's partner Jake, they have gone unbeaten in their two matches so far. This is down to their strong relationship, built working closely together over the years. Me and Liam play a lot together anyway before the NPL. We play a lot for the team that I play for at my club. So we experienced each other playing together before. And yeah, we just sort of, we've got paired together. And obviously we've had a good start. We, we know each other's games pretty well, so we play together quite well. The competition was set up in 1999. Three years later, it became national. We spoke to the man who started it all, Michael Dixon, who has overseen Wimbledon's finest take part in the event. You know, we've had Jamie Murray play. Uh, the finals we've just had, we've had the 2012 Wimbledon doubles champion, Johnny Murray, played in the final. He actually partnered Marcus Willis, the guy that took Wimbledon by storm in 2016 when he played Roger Federer. Michael spoke particularly highly of Southampton team captain, Paul Scullard. If Paul can you know, guide Southampton City to the finals, it'd be great for the Southampton tennis. In trying to get Southampton involved in the league for a number of years, you know, um, we've got a very, very capable captain in Paul Scullard. Hunter's estate agent sponsored the entire event, and Southampton's managing director, Jonathan Clegg, has a keen interest in the success of the Southern side. We're just pleased to be involved and to, to help support uh, a, a young team. Follow their, follow their dreams and uh, hopefully get some enjoyment from the sport. The Hunters group is fully behind the Southampton team and wish them all the best in the next match. And Southampton City have a key match next on the 10th of December going against Taunton with the hopes of qualifying top of the South West region. Competing in the South West region, I expect them to be very, very close at the end in qualification for the national finals. 
And finally, today is Black Friday, which means one thing, shopping chaos across the UK. We sent our reporters out to West Quay's shopping centre to see what the public would buy for our favourite sports stars. I would get Mo Farah a kitchen because he's always uh, on the adverts in mobile kitchens, so he needs a home, obviously. So cook his corn up. Okay. Usain Bolt, a new hamstring. A kilt, Hamilton, <laughs> old hammy, and I think he'd look grand in it. Anthony Joshua, a pair of running shoes, so he could lose weight because he's too big at 18 stone. He should be 17 stone, he'd be much more effective. So I don't really know that many sports uh, athletes, but the ones that I know definitely I would never give them any present. They have more than enough. From what they should give me a present if they want to. No, yeah, just reverse the thing. Presents to me. Philippe Alves, come to me. I may even start liking sports. <laughs> Michael Jordan, a new basketball because I would like to see him play again. I'd buy Gaza a place in rehab. Um, I would buy Wayne Rooney um, a breathalyzing device. Make sure he doesn't drink and drive, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Joshua, a pair of boxing gloves. <laughs> How about that? Some great answers there from the Southampton public. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. We'll be back next week at the same time. In the meantime, you can follow us on all the goings-on at Solent Sports News on Twitter. But from all of us, it's a very good afternoon. <laughs>